Hi, this is a design that comes off Thingiverse and it's very important with these engines that they are extremely free. Friction is the enemy of a Stirling engine and uh, one of the statements is if it doesn't bounce it won't go. No bounce, no go. So one of the other things to look for, these clips are by the way are very good, uh, is that the flywheel itself is very free. So with these uh, dangling con rods they need to swing for about 20 times given uh, a, a small push and if you take the con rods off and then spin the actual flywheel with no con rods it should spin for about 20 seconds and don't use bearings that have got shields on them shielded bearings more friction they come greased supposedly for life shielded bearings are not a good idea they uh, come greased for life and the grease is in there and it's more friction you wash them out with WD-40 but buy bearings without shielding in just as the flywheel and the con rods have to be free so too do the plungers in the syringes with it rigged up as it is now it is essential that the cold piston or the hot piston moves freely no juddering so when you feel it no scraping no juddering do this this way round and with the hot piston disconnected as well just to see how it works these are just cable ties and of course with this clip it just works rather nicely I doubt that I can do it single handed with a camera in the other talking at the same time but who knows we'll give it a go no definitely not so you and how do you stop one of these syringes from gripping or binding when they get hot you use bra so I tend to use a piece of kitchen paper and uh, you grip the uh, plunger in the paper and twist it round and that has probably used that quantity of grinding grit that's in there so I do that all over again twice more. Finally wash the brasso off with water and then dry it off with a cloth and then you're ready to go okay now let's get it running please note that this is a fairly small flame a lot of heat just gives problems it makes the uh, the uh, for a temperature gradient between the cylinder and the plunger uh, because the outside gets heated very fast and the inside doesn't catch up and then differential expansion breaks out um, so a gentler flame is all that's needed it's coming up to 30 seconds now so I'll give you a demonstration of uh, how good it is or isn't are we getting there? yes 30 seconds not much sign of life yet usually goes a bit after one minute so I shall wait a little while to get up to 45 seconds, etc. And here we go again. And there is a bit of run on there. So it's beginning to get the heat through into the chamber. It takes about 4 or 5 seconds for a change in the heat to be reflected. And here we come up to 1 minute. Don't give it a mighty flick because if you give it a mighty flick it starts to take heat out of the chamber and it's staggering along there, the heat flows are more or less right, it should pick up in a moment yeah it's beginning to now and uh, I will take timings of it every minute or so because after about two minutes a bit of thermal binding breaks out and it will slow down, it even stop around about minute five it should be getting more into thermal equilibrium now one of the things is that the pillar for the flywheel is not really strong enough it is vibrating forwards and backwards and that uh, is lost energy this is running quite well but it will go a bit further faster 
this is two minutes now, the small flame also prevents heat travelling along the syringe uh, into the plastic support. I've got PTFE tape wrapped around the syringe as a bit of heat barrier to try and, uh, there we go, that was a bit of thermal gripping, thermal binding, and it may not get it through there. I may have to restart it. I'm at two and a half minutes at the moment. But it's thermal expansion that's gripping. It takes quite a while to get these things to equilibrium. Yeah, it did stop. And it doesn't really want to run very much. Will it pick up? Coming up for three minutes. Yeah, there we go. And that was the thermal expansion easing. Yeah, that's uh, three minutes now. I'm very supportive of the 3D printing community being successful with this engine. And to go into the detail of some of the difficulties I've had and why it does and why it doesn't, I think should be helpful. This is the second engine that I've worked with. The first one was far more difficult. Um, it was actually seizing before it could get up enough heat. Here we go again, three and a half minutes. Will it survive? No. I can feel a little bit of stiffness there. Definitely doesn't want to run. I can't feel any scraping. But if I help it through this period, hopefully we will be rewarded. Yeah, that's 4 minutes 20 seconds. And I detect a bit of acceleration. Four and a half minutes. And it's going to be a happier engine, I hope. Coming up to five minutes. Mark. So I hope by showing this the thermal characteristics of the engine, it will be a help to those who have never assembled a Stirling engine before. You don't just print out a Stirling engine, assemble it and it goes. You assemble it and then you coax it into life. And the Brasso has been the uh, biggest factor in my success with this. Yeah, it's picking up some revs now. We're at five and a half minutes. And I have had it stop at this stage. We're getting nearer to the seven minutes. I find that after seven minutes, it's got thermal equilibrium. And I've got a reliable, continuously running engine then the uh, plastic starts to melt and uh, we really do need a wooden support here instead of plastic. It doesn't have to be both sides, just the one. Now we're just crossing the six minute mark. Here we go again. A little bit of thermal binding. Now I can't feel any any friction. You've really got to take the con rods off. There we go. 6 minutes 33 seconds. You've really got to take the con rods off for it to be detectable by your hand. Now this is getting up to a better rate. So you assemble a Stirling engine and then you observe how it fails and then you work out where is the friction, where is the malalignment, 
and then you adjust which so it is essential that these engines should be very easily dismantable and the one on Thingiverse the con rods are too short uh, these con rods are 50% longer so that I can undo the clamp to the plunger and I can remove the plunger without it tangling or hitting the flywheel so reckon always to have to disassemble your uh, engine quite a lot of times right 7 minutes 30 seconds hopefully going well I think I mentioned the fact that this support is actually pulsing and flexing that just needs to be made a bit more solid because any sort of flexing or vibration is lost energy right that's eight minutes I suspect I could actually run this engine now on less heat having got it up into near thermal equilibrium it doesn't actually need so much heat to keep it going. That's 8 minutes 30 seconds. I have seen it go a bit faster than this. I did try balancing the uh, flywheels. I had to remove five of the ten nuts on each flywheel, nine minutes, on each flywheel to get balance. But then I found that there was not enough momentum in the flywheel to sustain the uh, motion through the compression stroke. I will stop it at ten minutes uh, because then I'll be able to show you the run on. Because the sign of a good Stirling engine is how long does it run on after the heat has been removed. Can it use the stored heat? Coming up to 9 minutes 30 seconds. It's fluctuating up and down in terms of speed and this is I think thermal binding. Nine minutes forty five. Sorry about the camera position. I'm looking at a watch, looking at the flame, trying to get the focus right. And we're almost there at 10. That's 5, 8, 8 seconds, 9 seconds. I have had 24 seconds. Thank you very much.